repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. The evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the <coughs> truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing. But and the nothing but the truth. Thank you. So help me God. <laughs> First of all, can you give us your full name, please? My name is David Martin Scott Steele, known in the House of Lords as Lord Steele of Rickwood. Thank you, Lord Steele. Um, you've made a statement to the inquiry, which I'm going to uh, adduce in full, INQ 002748. And perhaps we can put it up on screen. Tell us something about your, your career in, in politics, please. I was elected in a by-election in 1965 as uh, an MP, and have held the, held the seat ever since I until I retired in 1997. Um, John Major put me in his dissolution list during the election, so I had no break at all. I served so many years in the Commons, and I went straight into the House of Lords. Yeah, and you went into the House of Lords in uh, 97. June 87 or 97? 97. 97. Um, leader of the Liberal Party between 1976 and 1988, correct. Leader of the Lib Dems, March 1988 to July 1988, correct. And you were also a Liberal Chief Whip in 1970 to 1976. I think it was 75, but uh, but but around then, yes. Right. I started after the 70 election. And the first thing I'd like to ask you. Uh, for your assistance with Lord Steele is this, um, Cyril Smith really, what, <clears throat> what did you make of him um, as, as a colleague in the Liberal uh, Party? Well I listened to the uh, evidence this morning of Des Wilson, I thought he put it very well that he was a rather Jekyll and Hyde character. I think in my written statement I've told how um, after the party leadership election when he had supported my <coughs> opponent, John Pardo, uh, he said that he wouldn't speak in any constituency that had voted for me. For you, yeah. So that was, um, it, it, he was a sort of prickly character. Yes. Um, in your third paragraph of your statement, um, you say he was a difficult colleague. Is, is that a, a, a reasonable statement or an understatement? Um, I think it was an accurate statement, yes. He was a difficult colleague. He, he could be quite difficult on a, a number of issues, yes. We know he was elected in the by-election in 1972 for uh, Rochdale, but had first been selected as a prospective parliamentary candidate in 1970. Uh, and you tell us something about um, selection panels. I don't need to ask you uh, about that. Um, did you ever become aware uh, during the period when uh, you were in Parliament and he had become one of your parliamentary colleagues of any historic allegations into child sexual abuse that concerned him? No, not, at, not at all until I read The Private Eye. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, ha had you not even heard that he had been investigated by Lancashire Police? No. Between 1969 and 1970, the papers had gone up to the DPP. I knew nothing about that. Nothing at all? No. So not, not one of your parliamentary uh, colleagues had ever told you that? No. Nope. Not even heard it on the grapevine? No, nope. nothing at all. Not from any of the whips? No one? Nothing. Let, let's then have a look, please, at the, <coughs> at the articles. Um, we have them in hard copy. Uh, Lord Steele, behind tab two in the file that you have, the second tab, but if once you've found that, what I'd like you to do, first of all, is to go, please, to page five, because that's the original article, INQ 000963 at page five, um, from which the um, private eye article was derivative. <laughs> So I'm what sorry, we, page, page, page five. Page five within that document. That's not part of the, the private eye piece. It's not, because it's the RAP, the Rochdale yes. Alternative Paper article. Can I just make this point, too, that um, I never saw this Rochdale I account see. until I got these papers. Ah. Um, all I went on was the private eye 
uh, story. All right, well, let's, let's just focus then on the privatized story. So we need to go back uh, a single page to page four. And <clears throat> uh, we had part of this in uh, evidence this morning. But if we focus on uh, about halfway down where the article deals with the allegations. Can, can, can I just <clears throat> make a point before you get that far? I think the first sentence is very important. Yes. Um, if I may read it out. There Please. is not an important newspaper or TV station in the land which has not received a copy of the May issue of the Rochdale Alternative Paper. And the reason I say that's important is because of what Des Wilson said this morning when he said that he had come across at least two MPs who had never seen Private Eye. Yeah. It's possible that I might not have seen Private Eye, but I happen to be a subscriber to, the, to that excellent magazine, yeah. and so I had read it. But if I hadn't read it, yeah. I wouldn't have known anything about this no. at all. The, the Rochdale Observer, although they circulated it to newspapers and so on, they never sent me a copy, and I received no inquiries from any paper or any letter or telephone call or anything about it. But it so happened that you were a subscriber. Yes. And because you were a subscriber, privatised what you saw, the article from which it uh, derived, the Rochdale Alternative Paper, was something you were completely unaware of. I've never of. seen it, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's just look at some of the detail. Uh, <clears throat> um, there's a paragraph which begins, the first man says, and we had this this morning, the first man says that he had missed a day off work. Have you been able to find that? Yeah, I'll I follow you. You got that? Good. Yeah. The first man says that he'd missed a day off work, which was against the hostel rules, and he was talking about Cambridge House. He was reported and interviewed by Cyril Smith. His statement goes on. He gave me the choice between accepting his punishment or leaving the hostel. I said I'd accept his punishment. He took me into the quiet room, told me to take my trousers and pants down and hit me f four or five times with his bare hands on my bare buttocks. The second <coughs> man's statement says, Cyril Smith found that I'd taken some money, asked me if I would accept his punishment or be dealt with by the authorities. I said I would accept his punishment. He then told me to take off my trousers and pants and bend over his knee. He trapped my hands between his legs. He hit me many times with his bare hand. And I pleaded with him to stop because he was hurting me. This took place at the hostel. Afterwards, he came to my bedroom and wiped my bare buttocks with a sponge. Another man says, after a few days, I was given a kind of medical examination by Cyril Smith. He told me to take my trousers and pants down. He held my testicles and told me to cough. And the RAP editors say they have four other sworn statements from men who alleged similar spankings or inspections. Um, do, do you accept on the face of it, the allegations weren't limited to the spanking of bottoms, but they... Um, appear, if accurate, to have included allegations which were far more serious? Well, I, I accepted the, the article as presumably correct, and which is why I questioned Cyril Smith about it. Right. Now, when you uh, questioned Cyril Smith about it, can you tell us the circumstances in which you did so? We know that uh, these articles were published, uh, well, the original um, Rochdale Alternative Paper article was published in May, there was a follow-up article in June, but the Private Eye article uh, came hot on the heels, it appears, of the Rochdale Alternative Paper article. So when you spoke to Cyril Smith about it, was it around that time? May yes, it, it would have been immediately after the 79 election, I guess. So around the very same time, May, presumably? Yes. Yeah. And where, where, where did you see him? In your, uh, an office in Parliament or in uh, Liberal headquarters? In, in the House of Commons. Um, by appointment or an no, informal meeting? No, no, no. It was, it was uh, simply a conversation. Uh, and how did the conversation go? Well, um, 
I was afraid you'd ask for that because 40 years later it's a bit difficult to remember the precise well, well, conversation. Lord Steele, uh, no, no, nobody's expecting a verbatim account. No. But what was, what was the nature of what you said to him? What I said to him was, what's all this about you in private eye? Yeah. And he said, rather to my surprise, it is correct yeah. that he had been uh, in charge of or had some supervisory role in a, in a children's hostel that he'd been investigated by the police and that they had taken no further action. And that was the end of the story. So um, should we take from that that it was a very, very brief discussion? I think it was fairly brief, yes. Confrontational? No, not, not, not really. Um, I was just trying to find out whether this was correct or not, and it was. And how did he react to it, apart from the words that he spoke to you, we've heard something about his character and his size and his um, intimidatory nature. Did he exhibit any of that to you during the course of this discussion? <laughs> Not at all, no. Had he ever, in any circumstances? No, I never felt intimidated by him. I, I was annoyed by him sometimes, but that's another matter. Did, did you um, <coughs> go into any detail with him? Did you say, well, Look, Cyril, we're, we're not just talking about the spanking of bottoms, we're talking about allegations about you holding no, boys' I'd, testicles. I, I didn't have the magazine with me, so I no. wasn't going into the detail. I was just saying I'd read this in the paper. Yeah. What had he to say? Now, w what I would ask you to remember is that this was um, 1979. We were talking about an investigation two decades previously uh, when he had been a Labour councillor. Well, one decade previously. Sorry? It was 1969. Was it 69? 69. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was earlier than that. No, the, the, the Lancashire investigation was 1969 to right. 1970. I didn't know that. Anyway, it was, it was quite old, but it was certainly before he was um, an MP and yeah. before he was even a member of my party. Yes. My point was that he had gone on uh, since then to be mayor of Rochdale, to be given the MBE for services to local government, then he joined the Liberal Party. He'd been elected as MP with increasing majorities, I think, four times. So I saw no reason or no locus to go back to something that had happened during his time as a councillor in Rochdale. Why did you raise it with him at all then? Because I was concerned, having read the thing in private eye. I mean, it seemed quite natural to ask him about it. What was it. the concern, that it might be true? Sorry? What was the concern, that it might be true? Yes. Even despite the fact that there had been an investigation which had come to nothing. Well, I didn't know that at the time. So, you, uh, uh, so that we understand you, are you saying that it wasn't <coughs> even um, uh, apparent to you, Lord Steele, that he'd been investigated by that time and the DPP had decided not to prosecute? I don't remember the DPP coming into the conversation at all. It was simply that he had been investigated, that was correct, yeah. and no further action had been taken which I assume to be a, a police matter. Yeah. My, 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 my question is, if, if by the time you were speaking to Cyril Smith about this, you had understood there had been a police investigation which in effect had come to nothing, what, what was the need for you to, dis, to speak to him at all? Well, I, as I say, all I knew was what was in private eye, yeah. and because it was in private eye, it was in the public domain, I thought it was only right to well. ask him about it. Well, what, let's, let, let's imagine for a moment, and I'm, uh, I appreciate that this is um, a hypothetical situation, but what if Cyril Smith, instead of saying that the article is correct, but it, is, it all came to nothing because it was investigated, and he actually said, well, I did do these things to those boys. How would you have dealt with it? Well, he didn't say that to no, me. No, no, yeah. but that's why I'm asking yeah. you for a hypothetical question. What well, if he had said it? As I said in my written statement, my personal opinion is that he was misusing his role uh, as a whatever his supervisory role was. He was misusing it. Well, can, can I ask you what you did mean? Um, if you've got paragraph eight of your statement in front of you, please. If you go back, that's um, behind your first tab. And yep. perhaps we can put it up on screen, please. INQ 002748. Paragraph two, eight. eight. Paragraph eight? Eight, please, yes. Yeah. You say, I took no further action. This is the fourth line down. I took no further action. 
<clears throat> as the report referred to events before he was even a member of the Liberal Party, it seemed to me that he had possibly exceeded his role as a local Labour councillor. What, what did you mean by those words? Well, he was a... Uh, he claimed that he had been... Uh, had some supervisory role in in the ho in the hostel as yeah. a councillor, right. which entitled him to do these things, which I disagreed with. But still, that was that was his view. Um, as you mention it, one, one, one of the excuses he was giving you. Are you able to hear me, Lord Steele? All right. One of one of the excuses he gave you was that uh, as a Labour councillor and having some supervisory or management role within this mm -hmm. hostel, he was permitted to what perform medical inspections. That was the impression you gave, yes. And what was your response to that? Well, I, I don't think we went into detail on the individual bits of the private eye story. He, he just accepted that the story was correct. And uh, obviously I disapproved, but it was, as far as I was concerned, past history. Was there any policy that the Liberal Party at that time um, uh, had um, when accusations of this nature were made, or if such accusations were made, or any accusations made of serious crime against uh, a member of parliament within the party, how that would be dealt with? Not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, was there any policy or any um, safeguarding type of policy at this time in relation to uh, allegations of offences committed towards children? Well, I don't think it had happened before, so I, I, no. I, I wasn't aware of it anyway, no. And we know that no formal inquiry was held. No. And that, and that was the end of it. That was uh, the end of it. As, as I say, I might not even have read Private Eye, in which case we'd never have heard of it. But you did. I did, yes. A and because you did, you had the conversation you've yeah. told us about, although, albeit it was a relatively short conversation. Yeah. Were you prepared to take his word for it? <clears throat> yes, well, you know, he didn't deny it. No. So, of course, I took his word for it. Well, he didn't deny um, the terms of the private eye article and the fact that he'd been investigated. But as to whether he had actually committed the offences of which these men were accusing him, was that a topic which ever I arose? I don't think we went into the conversation no. that deeply, no. So, so you came away from that meeting, Lord Steele, not, not really knowing if he'd committed these offences at all? Well, I assumed he had, because he said that the account was, was correct. Why would he have been investigated if he hadn't done something that was uh, possibly wrong? So you, so you understood that he'd actually committed these offences from what he said to you? I assumed that. Right. Wasn't that all the more reason to take matters further and hold some form of inquiry? No, because it was, as I say, before he was an MP, before he was even a member of my party, it had nothing to do with me. Um, we heard this morning that there was a formal inquiry launched by the party into Jeremy Thorpe. Was that qualitatively different in any way to...? Yes, because it was current. It was it, current? It was current. What gave you the confidence, Lord Steele, that if Cyril Smith was confessing to you in 1979 that ten years or more before he had been assaulting children, that he wasn't continuing to do it on your watch? Well, uh, he was no longer involved with, with the children's home, and indeed it had closed down. You're right about that. But Sorry? You're right about that. But um, did you not think that what if Cyril has access to other children, he could be doing this um, uh, again? Well, I had no such suspicion or reason to think that. Had you ever heard of Knollview School? No. Where <clears throat> he would allow himself into the premises on occasions and would visit the school, which was a school for boys. Did you appreciate that? Well, uh, th I think that was in the private eye story, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Was it not? No, but my point is, my, my point is, if, if Cyril Smith, during this meeting, has admitted to you, in effect, that he was guilty of the accusations, the question arises well, you why... Well, have to be careful about the word guilty because, of course, he was... Uh, no further action was taken. I, I'm not using it in the guilty or not right. guilty sense, Lord right. Steward, you understand, but in the sense he's confessing to you yeah. that he has committed these acts which have been alleged against him. And I'm seeking to understand from you why that was the end of the matter, you being Liberal Party leader at this point, why you did nothing about it. 
simply because, as I repeat, he was not an MP at the time, he wasn't even a member of my party, so I didn't feel that I had any locus in the matter at all, but other than being a reader of the magazine. Get that, but you understand the points I'm making. Yes. He could, for all you knew, still be offending against children. That never, I had to admit, that never occurred to me, and, and uh, I, I'm not sure it would occur to me even today. Yeah. Now, the, you, you say that it was only private eye uh, that you were aware of and that you hadn't seen the Rochdale Alternative paper, but can I ask you about this, please? In, in the file behind tab two, and can we put this up on the screen? Uh, which, I'm not which, sure if... Which tab is it? Tab two, please. And if you go to the <coughs> sixth page, you'll see 006. In the bottom right-hand corner, INQ 000963, page six. Yep, I got it. Uh, with, his, I, with the photograph of Sir Smith on it. Yeah. That's the one. Um, I'm not sure we're able to bring up the... Uh, ideally, we would have pages two and three together. But you, you'll know what I'm uh, about to ask you, Lord Steele. There's a quotation which begins just under the photograph... Under the photograph. Yeah, uh, I have to read across to the third page, which isn't up on screen, and I don't think we can do a split screen. But the way it reads is, it's a quotation, and you have been asked about this before, it's not a very, <coughs> it's not a very friendly gesture publishing that. All he seems to have done is spanked a few bare bottoms, and the quotation is attributed to David Steele's press office the 22nd of April 1979. Well, the first thing to say is that I, I, I'm afraid I didn't have the luxury of a press officer. So no. it was the party press office. Yeah. Um, and he may well have said that. I don't know. Um, would it be something that you would have approved? Well, that's a hypothetical question. I don't think it was ever discussed. So, I, I, in fact, I'm sure it was never discussed because I would remember if anyone had mentioned it. The date of it is the 22nd of April. And if the date is accurate and the publication date for this um, Rochdale Alternative Paper article is also accurate... This it, was coming out during the election, then? Well, it predated. The, the quotation yeah. is alleged to have predated or is said to have predated the publication date of the RAP article. Right. Right. You'll see it's in quotation marks. Yeah. So it suggests, the internal logic of it is it suggests that somebody gave that quotation to the RAP. And it suggests also, I, I, I um, understand that you say you didn't have a personal press officer, but it was a party officer. Do you think, as le leader of the Liberal Party at the time, that anyone in that office would have put out um, a, a statement of that nature without your approval to it? Oh, yes, that's perfectly possible. And, in fact, I'm sure that's what happened, because I, I, would, have, I would have heard about it, but if it, if it was the 12th of April, that would have been actually during the election. 20, 22nd of April. 20, well, even more the 22nd yeah. of April. I forget what the date of the election was, but yeah. it would certainly have been running at that time. Yeah. I would have been up in Scotland. I was nowhere yeah. near the party headquarters. Oh. So we, we should understand that somebody was willing to um, put out a press statement which was... Well, a... well, was it a press statement or was it an answer to a query from the well, paper? I can't tell you. No, but well, I, I suspect from, from the look of it, it was, it was the, the paper ringing up party headquarters and getting this comment from a press yeah. officer. A bit of a silly thing to have said, though, don't you agree? Quite possibly, yes, yes. Um, a, a silly thing to have said, not least on its own terms, but also because anybody looking at this would think it had the leader of the Liberal Party's approval. Yes, yes. The, the, I see what you mean, yeah. But it rather trivialises yeah. what, what these young men um, had alleged. Uh, and not only does it trivialise it... Well, of course, we don't know what he was being told. Over, presumably this was over the telephone. Uh, what one might assume, but at the same time, it, it's a trivialisation yeah. of spanking of bare bottoms when we know that the allegations were uh, uh, far more serious. Yeah. It was the cupping of yeah. boys' testicles yeah. and that kind of activity. But what you say in your witness statement in paragraph 8, you don't need to turn back to it, but uh, you, you, you actually said 
the paper said that this was stated by the pref press office on sorry, my... Sorry, sorry, just a minute, let me get... Do you want to go back to it? Which, which paragraph are we at? Paragraph 8. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, OK. You'll see at the last three lines. The paper said this was stated by the press office on my direction. Now... To be fair to you, Lord Steele, the paper doesn't appear to say that at all. Oh, right. But what you say is that's extremely unlikely, but after the passing of nearly 40 years, I can't be absolutely certain. So it is the situation you don't have, and nobody would expect you to have, but is the situation you don't have a particular memory of this at all, this well, quotation? as I say, the, 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 you've pointed out the date to me, which is actually quite important. Yeah. I, I would have been up in Scotland in the election campaign uh, no, we're near the party headquarters and certainly not in a position to make any comment to a press officer. Yeah. But uh, so I'm, uh, now reading that again, uh, I think I'm absolutely certain it was not put out on my behalf no. or with my authority. Um, if that's right, um, did, did anybody ever bring to your attention that that had gone out as if it had come from you no, or your office? as I say, I, I knew nothing about any of this until mm. I read Private Eye. Well, this is all happening around the same time. Yes, but what, what, what the date of publication of Private Eye must have been later than that, wasn't of it? Of course, but yeah. I think around the same time, Yeah. maybe a week or so afterwards. Yeah. Um, if somebody had brought to your attention after you had read the Private Eye article that this wasn't just about spanking a few bare bottoms, but it was more serious than that. Would you have done anything to have um, uh, countermanded uh, what had been said apparently by you or on your behalf? That's a double hypothetical question because I didn't know that had been said, so I, I'm not sure <laughs> I can answer that. Well, it, it, it is hypothetical, but what I'm asking, Lord Steele, is for how you would have dealt with this if it had been brought to your attention. There is a hypothesis ah, there, well, if it had but been I'm asking for your, how you, what, what your, the nature of your approach would have been. Yeah, if it had been brought to my attention, obviously I'd have been concerned about it, but it wasn't brought to my attention, so that, that was the end of the matter. Can I ask you uh, now, please, to go behind tab five in the bundle? And it was something Baroness Brinton was asked about this morning. It's INQ003954. Yeah. Right. If that can go up on the screen, please. And these are minutes of a meeting yes. of the National Executive yes. Yes. Um, held on Friday the 11th of May 1979 um, at the Midland Hotel Manchester. Now, <clears throat> no, no, nobody says that you were there. Did you know of Claire Brooks? Did yes, I do. I that? remember her, yes. Now, and you've heard the description Baroness Brinton gave this yes, morning. Yes, I thought very accurate. Yep. And you agree with it? Yeah, she was a substantial figure in the party. To turn the page, please in the documents. Have you got the second page of it? I think yes. you probably have. And if we go towards the bottom where we see her name, Claire yeah. Brooks. Yeah. Claire Brooks expressed her extreme disquiet at the unfair tactics used by opponents of the Liberal Party. There'd been one particularly damaging article in a northern regional newspaper uh, and other notable instances of unethical behaviour demonstrated by the major parties the executive was firmly of the opinion that if any candidate believed that adequate grounds existed, the possibility of taking legal action should be seriously considered. Um, looking back now, um, do you think, or are you able to help, whether what she might have been talking about by way of unfair tactics, um, in this particular instance, a damaging article in a northern regional newspaper could have applied to anything other than the article in the Rochdale Alternative paper? It, it, might, it might have been a reference to the article yeah. in the Rochdale paper. I, I just don't, don't know. Don't know. Um, or it might have been, as Baroness Brinton was saying, something entirely different. Um, and so if I was to ask you um, the question whether at the time people might have just seen that as something that was simply scurrilous, uh, and done in order to gain political advantage. Is that perhaps how some people might have seen things at that time? 
Well, it it must have been because this paper. I don't know what its circulation was, but presumably it was it's about eight eight thousand. Is, yeah, is, well, is my, eight thousand circulating me. in Rochdale. Presumably, its readership was more than eight thousand. And yet, as I say, Cyril Smith was constantly being re-elected. So, uh, and and none of these uh, rumours or uh, allegations come came to us, or n nobody wrote in to us, or phoned us, or raised any questions. It's very hmm. strange. So it, it must have been dismissed as scurrilous, I suppose. Now, uh, you succeeded uh, Jeremy Thorpe in office as leader in May 1976, I think I'm right yeah, in saying? Yeah. Uh, when he resigned over the, yeah. the Scott affair. Um, had you ever heard of anybody called Andre Thorne? You have been asked about him. Audrey? Thorne. No. Name doesn't mean anything to no. you. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that Jeremy Thorpe was tried at the Old Bailey three years later um, uh, during a trial lasting six weeks beginning on the 8th of May, 1979. Does that ring true to you? It was around that period, the trial? Sorry? May 1979, the yeah. Thorpe trial. Is that about right? Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly, but it was around that time, yeah. yes. So all of this is going on at the same time. We've got Cyril Smith allegations in private eye following on from the Rochdale Alternative paper allegations in May 1979. We've got the Thorpe trial going on. Um, these are all huge things for you to navigate, presumably, as the Liberal leader around that time. Yes, the, 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 the Thorpe thing was a very ghastly experience. And as I say, you have, uh, around the same time, Private Eye building on uh, the allegations um, in, in a local newspaper exposing Cyril Smith, who's got away, as it were, without being tried for allegations of child sexual abuse. Do you think, looking back now, that your reaction to the Smith publicity coming as it was during the very time all of this was going on may have informed your judgments about what to do? I don't think so, no. I mean, you know, I've obviously thought about it because that's uh, the allegation in some of the other uh, statements that have been submitted to this inquiry. I, r I really don't think so. I don't think there was any connection between the two things at all. So you, you don't think the, perhaps the reality of inaction by the party on Smith was because the party simply couldn't afford another scandal at the same time as thought? A absolutely not. As I say, the party was unaware of all this, and I could mm. easily have been unaware of it if I hadn't been a contributor to Private Eye. I'm, exactly. I, 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 but, but the fact is, as I've said already, you were. Yeah. Uh, did you find out or know whether any of your colleagues had read... It was never discussed so at all. And, yeah. and you, you've been able to see the statements of other colleagues of yours, Michael yeah. Meadowcroft, um, David Alton, yeah. who, who say that they, that they didn't know about exactly. it. Exactly. So, so it was pure coincidence, pure chance, that because you were a subscriber, you did know, but to the exclusion it, it, of anyone else. Exactly so. A matter of interest, did you, having spoken to Cyril Smith about these, um, these matters, then go and speak to some of your senior colleagues and say, um, have you heard about these allegations? Cyril's just confessed to me that he, he did it. No, um, I never uh, discussed it with anybody else. Was um, there a reason for that? It, it wasn't a matter of public discussion at all. Well, not public, but you're, you're... No, I mean, even within the parliamentary party. Um, you didn't want to take advice? You didn't no. see the need to take advice? No. No. <clears throat> now, you, you've, you've heard, as you've indicated, Des Wilson's um, evidence this morning, um, uh, and you, I think I remember you saying that you agreed with his characterization. Yes. Um, do you also agree with what he said in, the, um, in his witness statement that Cyril Smith was a monstrous character? Well, I think that's pitching it a bit high, yeah. but um, I, I thought his statement this morning was, was reasonably accurate, yes. And why people tended not to confront him? I'm not sure that that's true. I think in, in politics, it doesn't matter what your physical size is or anything like that. <coughs> if, I think if people had been seriously concerned about allegations against him, they would have confronted him. 
Yeah. Um, could, would you kindly turn to tab six? Tab six, because we've got Des Wilson's statement there. Yeah. It's INQ 003670 at page four. And I'd like you to turn to paragraph 15, please. Paragraph? 15 on the fourth page. I don't have a 15. Um, you should do. Paragraph 15 on the fourth page. It'll go up on the screen. Have you got that? Yeah, I've, I've got it on the screen, yes. Okay. And this is what Des Wilson had to say in, in the statements he made to the inquiry. I've been asked about the party's response to the private eye disclosures. If you knew Smith, you would understand why no one would raise the accusations with him. No one would want to create that kind of enemy. Note his response to my general election involvement referred to above. I have no idea why no action was taken after the private eye article, but then I wasn't around and perhaps Steele did discuss it with him, we know you did, though Steele's natural tendency, in my view, would be to hide his head in the sand rather than get involved in a nasty confrontation. Now, do you recognise that about yourself? Um, a, a pardonable exaggeration, I would say. <laughs> w w which is the exaggeration? Um, I, w I wouldn't have been hiding my head in the sand, as, a, mm. as I've explained to you. These allegations all related to a period yeah. some years before, and before he was an MP and before he was even a member of the party. Therefore, it didn't seem to me that I had any position in the matter at all. Yeah. Well, which you've explained. Now, um, behind tab seven, behind tab seven, there is the book review which uh, Des Wilson wrote for the Mail on yeah. the 27th of April 2014. Yeah. And if we can put that up, please, INQ 004084. Page four? Um, right. Just a moment, <coughs> please. <coughs> yes, and if he, you go to page... I've, I've, I've marked it when I read this because he says, uh, Here, herein lies part of the answer to the question, why was Smith not questioned about the rumours beginning to emerge from his political fortress in uh, Rochdale, Rumours at that time were publicly referred to in private eye. Well, yeah. I've explained why uh, th th nothing was done about it, because nobody knew about it. But if you look at page four, it's, it's um, a little before that, in fact, in that paragraph I wanted to ask you, but as liberal le leader, he hated confrontation. That's why he didn't want to hear about the nocturnal behaviour of some of those round that table because devoid of any need to actually campaign for worthwhile causes, they had plenty of time for extramural activities, and herein lies part of the answer to the question, why was Smith not questioned about the rumours beginning to emerge from his political fortress of Rochdale? Uh, and so De Des Wilson has, um, in this book review, and indeed um, in his witness statement, claimed that you dislike confrontation, and my question is, was that true or false? Well, I think I tend, uh, the whole of my political life, to be more in favour of seeking compromises rather than confrontation, yes. I mean, it's quite, it was quite interesting uh, listening to Des this morning that he's, he's rode back a bit from the, 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 this rather diatribe article to say, well, it was just a book review. And there was a history to it because he, he actually fell out. He didn't, this didn't come up in the uh, evidence this morning. But after he'd been in charge of the election in 92, he rather fell out with my successor, Paddy Ashdown. I, I don't know the reasons why, I'm afraid. I can't enlighten you on that. But, mm -hmm. but they, they did have a big fallout, and Des became a bit bitter, and hence this uh, rather anti-article that appeared in the mail. So, so from your perspective and your understanding, uh, we should understand the nature, perhaps, of this article um, against that background. Yeah. Can you go, please, within the article to page six, something that uh, Des was asked about this morning? Uh, uh, at the top, was there a deliberate uh, cynical cover-up by the leadership? Um, I'm a believer in the cock-up theory of politics rather than the conspiracy one. There were two questions. One, should Smith be confronted with the rumours? I doubt anyone had the appetite for that. Personally, it was a frightening prospect. Two, should there be a formal inquiry? 
Coming so soon after the Jeremy Thorpe scandal, politically it was potentially catastrophic. And then beneath the photograph, as you heard um, quoted this morning, I think they got the biggest spade they could find, dug in the biggest hole in the sand they could manage, and buried their collective heads in it, hoping the rumours were unfounded or that it would all go away. In other words, it was cowardice rather than conspiracy. By now, parliamentary party meetings were dominated by Smith, who had a permanent grievance. He was undervalued as a campaigner, and complete confidence that he and he alone was the voice of the man in the street. Uh, and add, added to that, um, Lord Steele, there <coughs> were allegations that because uh, the Liberal Party was a small parliamentary party, the party could ill afford to lose Smith. Uh, and therefore, rather than confront him, one had to live with him in order to, as it were, protect the party. Was there any element of that going on? I, d I really don't think so. I think this is all, all of this passage is a bit of a, an exaggeration on Des's part. Uh, and, and it stems from the, from the fact that, as I say, the allegations related to the time before he was even a member of the party yeah. and, and, and that nobody knew about them. So how, how could there be... Uh, a sort of uh, determination by the party to cover up something they didn't even know about. I know, but I, I come back to the point I asked you to consider earlier, which is how could anybody be confident? Uh, and you were uniquely in possession of his confession. How could you in particular, and the party more generally, uh, be confident that Cyril Smith wasn't continuing to offend in the way he'd confessed to you that he had? I don't think we... I don't think the issue arose. I mean, it wasn't a question of being confident about it. It just didn't cross our minds. Um, you've seen Dominic Carman's witness statement, yeah. which deals with uh, the knowledge he attributes to his father about Smith's activities over some years. Um, if Dominic Carmen is accurate about that and that his father had known what Cyril Smith had been doing for years. Have you any idea how George Carmen might have known that, the father, but not you? Um, unless, like me, he was a reader of Private Eye. No, I don't have any idea. But over years. is, is The impression that Dominic Carmen gives is that George had known about Cyril Smith's um, proclivities for some years. Well, he might have, he might yeah. have known about, about the... Uh, what, what the we article. call the 69 inquiries, yeah. I see. And in terms of shutting down the press noise about it, specifically during the Thorpe trial, um, if solicitors were instructed, did the party have anything to do with that? If solicitors I'm sorry, were can, can you repeat that question? If solicitors were instructed to stop the media reporting the allegations against Smith during the Thorpe trial in 1979. But I don't think they were. Well, that's what Dominic Carman tends to suggest. If, 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 if Lord Goodman or somebody else had been instructed, did the party have anything to do with it? Certainly not. I'm, I'm totally unaware of that. Was Lord Goodman a, a Liberal Party solicitor? No, but he was, he was a, I think, a friend of Jeremy Thorpe's. Uh, that I do remember. Now, can we please go back to your uh, witness statement, which is yeah. behind the first tab for you. <clears throat> Paragraph 10, um, if you wouldn't mind. Sorry, um, which, which tab is it? It's tab, tab, two, tab, 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 two. tab one, I think, your yeah, witness statement it. is. Uh, Paragraph uh, 10, which pa is... Paragraph 10, OK. Paragraph 10 on the second page. Yeah. And this is about Cyril Smith's knighthood. Was, yes. it, a, was it a matter of course um, in the Liberal Party that a long-standing uh, uh, or an MP of long-standing service would be recommended for a, a, a knighthood? It was true across all parties, yeah. Uh, and you understood um, after 15 years' service, and by 1998 Smith was in poor health, and wasn't going to stand again as an MP. I think he, re he retired, didn't he, in the 1992 election? Did he? Was sorry? it the 1992 election that Smith stood down? Yes, I think so. Uh, 
I think he got his name. Yes, it must be, that, that must be a mistake, 1998. Yes, no, it should be 1988, shouldn't yes, it? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. He, no, no, not at all, but he got his knighthood, if my memory serves me, in 1988. Yeah, I think that's right. And you say, I passed the recommendation that he should be knighted to the Prime Minister in the normal way, and it was vetted by the Honours Scrutiny Committee. Yes. And you say, I know they do a thorough job because they had refused my nomination of an individual for an OBE on the grounds that he had once bounced a cheque. I didn't pass on any allegations about Smith sexually abusing children to the Honours Scrutiny Committee because I wasn't aware of any such allegations other than the matters referred to um, above, which is a reference to your witness statement, which, as I say, appeared to have been fully investigated and had been reported on by Private Eye. The problem, uh, may I suggest, is Cyril Smith had confessed to you that he had committed the acts which the magazine had published. Did you think that that was something that you should... Uh, even in confidence, tell the Honours Committee about? No, I'd, it never occurred to me to tell the Honours Committee about it, but that it was all, in a sense, in the public domain through private eye. Yeah. Uh, and you felt that sufficed? But, but what I can say is that if I'd had any suspicion that these activities had been continuing or had been involved mm. in any activity after he'd been an MP, then I certainly would not have recommended them for a knighthood. How, how often That's did what, you... That would have been my natural instinct. I, I was going to ask what, would, what you would have done. Yeah. How often did you ever approach Cyril Smith after the conversation you had... Never. ...in 1979 to say, is any of this still going on, Cyril? Never, never. So, so you just I'd didn't... No, I had no reason to. So you didn't know? No. And so you never found out before recommending him for a knighthood as to whether this activity might have been continuing no. for years? No. As an MP? No. No. Do you think you ought to have done, looking back? Sorry? Do you think you ought to have done? No, I don't think so. I, I, I have something to say about the Danzig book later on, if you want to come to that. But well, if there is something that's relevant to this, by all means. Um, well, th there was one thing that puzzled me about the, 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 the Danzig book. Um, uh, I've, I've said in my written statement why I think he, he wrote it and the political reasons behind it, but there was one reference in it which, and I read the book again recently before coming to, to give evidence here. Smile, smile for the camera is, is the yes, book. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I read it again recently. And there's an interesting reference to Michael Foote, who was then leader of the opposition, leader yeah. of the Labour Party. And there are two different accounts, and I don't know whether they come from the same person or not, but I rather assume they must have done, because why otherwise would Michael Foote have come into it? In the, in the book, uh, there's a reference to... Cyril Smith taking a boy to the House of Commons and he, the boy witnesses a conversation between Cyril Smith and Michael Foote. That's perfectly possible, I don't know, but that's in the book. There's a newspaper account which says that uh, he took this boy to his room uh, and engaged in sexual activity with him and it was a room where Michael Foote passed by. That I know is completely wrong for two reasons. One is that Cyril Smith didn't have a room. He had a desk in a room shared with four or five others, mm. any of whom could have walked in at any time, so that sounds unlikely. Also, it was, because I remember it well, I was responsible as chief whip for allocating the, the desks and the rooms. It was up a little stair above the members' cloakroom, nowhere near where Michael Foote's office was, so he wouldn't have been walking past. So for, for these reasons, I think... I had grave doubts about whether these uh, allegations were correct, but they, these all came out after Smith's death. Yeah. So I was no way I could ask him. But, but the allegations you knew to be true were the ones. Sorry? The, the allegations you knew to be true were the ones that Cyril Smith had confessed yes, to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you remember uh, Lord Steele appearing on uh, a Newsnight program on the fourth of June last year? No, but I'm sure I did. <laughs> yeah, but you, you certainly mention it in the statements at paragraph 11. In a televised interview with the BBC's Newsnight programme... Sorry, let me get hold of that again. Forgive me. Bottom of page two of your statement is up on the screen. In a televised interview with the BBC's Newsnight programme broadcast on the 4th of June 2018, I was asked questions about allegations of child sexual abuse made against Smith... 
I describe them as scurrilous hearsay and tittle-tattle. Can, can we just play the clip to remind you? <coughs> and the clip reference is INQ004085. You, b before it's played, you were actually being interviewed, I think in Ed you were in Edinburgh, but you were being interviewed by Evan Davies in the presumably the London studio about Thorpe, and then he asked you some questions about Smith. Well, we're not going to look, I hope, at the Thorpe part, but hopefully we're <laughs> queued up to the, okay. to the Cyril Smith part. Right. Thank you. Peas. One was Jeremy Thorpe, who a lot of people think conspired to murder someone. Do you and hear it? Cyril no, Smith. Pause, pause it, pause it. Oh, did, did, Sorry, no, I, no, no I, I know you can't. Can, can we pause it? Is there any way of turning up the volume? I think we have a technical user. I don't know if they can help. Just, just a minute. I know, Lord. I, we'll, just, we'll, if you like, just read it out. I don't mind. If you... I haven't got the. Oh. I haven't got the transcript. I'm afraid. We'll just see if we can turn up the volume. Just to set this in context, this was an interview about the, the film? I think it was about the, the, the Thorpe drama yes. that was on television uh, yes, last that's right. summer. It was, uh, that's right. Uh, yes. And you were asked for some observations. I, I recognise from where I was standing. When, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. They have turned it up. Right, they've turned up the volume. Let's see how we go. Okay. He's. One was Jeremy Thorpe, who a lot of people think conspired to murder someone. Another one was Cyril Smith, who now is widely regarded as having uh, abused a number of young men. I just wonder whether you think there was something well, wrong with they, the party at that stage. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute. Be careful what you say about Cyril Smith, because nothing has been proved against him at all. It's all been uh, scurrilous hearsay. And uh, so far, we're waiting for the final outcome of the inquiry. So it's, it's wrong to categorise so him in that so way. So you, 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 you don't think Cyril Smith was guilty of abuse at all? At this point. I don't know, but I, I think we have to we have to wait till the inquiry has finished its work. I don't think I think it's right to suddenly say that he was uh, just because of tittle tattle. Right. Um, let me ask you one last question. It's a complete change of subject, if I may, Lord Steele. You were the sponsor of the abortion, um, the, the, the deregulation. Um, Evan Davis, I'm sure. Um, asked you that question without you being aware you were going to be asked it. Exactly, and I, and I think it was probably just after I had read uh, the, the Danzig book. Yeah. Um, when you referred to scurrilous hearsay and tittle-tattle, you can't surely have been talking about the matters that Cyril Smith had confessed to you no, not all at those all. years I was, before. I was talking about the, the current... Mm. Uh, yeah, he was talking about 2018. Yeah. So, so when you use the words scurrilous hearsay and tittle-tattle, you didn't have in mind the fact that Cyril Smith had confessed. Not at all. I was talking about the Danzig book, frankly. And which particular allegations in the Danzig, Danchuk book were you well, saying I, were scurrilous I can't hearsay? Remember, there were so many in the book. Yeah. Um, I actually met with Danzig uh, yeah. so after the book was published. And I, I told him I thought a lot of it was uh, yeah. very doubtful. Anyway, uh, um, as a matter it, of interest, by by the fourth of June, but we can hear you saying that you were talking about this inquiry, and when this inquiry had finished its work, is that what you were saying when we were just hearing you talk about the inquiry? Was it this inquiry I was talking about? I'm, I, sure. I'm asking you. No, I don't. I can't remember. <laughs> um, did, had you by the fourth of June appreciated? that in October 2017, this inquiry had three weeks of hearings into uh, Cambridge House Hostel, Knollview School and Cyril Smith and Rochdale generally. Did you know that? I can't remember if I was aware of that at Did the time. But I, I, know, I know now that the, the, there was that yeah. inquiry. Yes. And there was a report which the inquiry published into those hearings um, in April... 2018, just a couple of months before you were interviewed by Evan Davis. Had you read it by then? No, no I haven't mm. read it. Because in it, some of the allegations by the young men who made the allegations which were written up by the Rochdale Alternative Paper and Private Eye were heard by the inquiry and they were sitting in the very witness box where you are now, Lord Steele. Did you know any of that by no, the time you spoke to Evan Davis? We're talking about, again, 
the time of the Private Eye article. Well, you are, yes. I was asking you about the, the interview, but I'm talking about the same allegations, the same series of allegations. That they were allegations referred to in Private Eye. They were not the allegations in the Danzig book. Uh, some of them were the same. Um, I haven't read the book for a long time myself, so right. I can't bring to mind exactly yeah. the allegations which Simon Danchuk um, himself made. And I remember the one that you make about the parliamentary um, incident, which you've told us, and thank you, that can't possibly have happened because of the geography which you've mentioned. Um, but the point I make is, at the time that you were being interviewed by Evan Davis, the inquiry had actually published a report into those matters. I don't think I'd read that. But you no, hadn't read it. No. Have you read it since? No, I haven't. No, I haven't seen it. <coughs> now, um, just a couple Sorry, of other... Sorry, I mean, can you enlighten me? Does that inquiry justify the allegations, confirm the allegations, or what? Well, the, the inquiry, if, if you want me to put up on screen, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. If, if we look at the Rochdale report, it's INQ004181. Oh, sorry, this is going back to the Rochdale report. Yes, is that what yeah. you want me to, to tell no, you about? it doesn't about? matter. It's okay, yeah. It, that doesn't I, matter. I thought you were referring to more recent ones. No, no, I'm talking about this inquiry, no. okay. which heard evidence from the very boys who were... Um, sexually assaulted right. by Cyril Smith at Cambridge House Hostel. And what conclusion did the inquiry come to? That, that their evidence was compelling. Right. Yeah. And, and in other words, that they should, the, the police investigation should have been pursued. It was yes. I mean, if you read the if you read the Rochdale investigation report, um, Lord, Lord Steele, you see amongst other things right. that the DPP's decision was turned around extremely quickly. Yeah. Um, the police were very keen and enthusiastic that Cyril Smith should be prosecuted, right? but he never was. Yeah. Well, I knew nothing about that no. at the time. Well, uh, may may I much. suggest, when you have a moment, you should read the report? Thank you very much. Yeah. OK. Now, let, let me move on to something else, please. Um, are you aware of the comments? Because I, I just want to tap your uh, recollection as, as a whip. Um, ha, are you familiar with um, a, a, a a program that went out in 1995 called Westminster Secret Service, in which a man by the name of Tim Fortescue um, gave his views about how the Whip's office, certainly for the Tory party, worked? No. Um, let, let's see if we can play it, and I hope the volume's good okay. enough for you to, um, to hear it. If not, I can tell you on this occasion what he actually said. It's INQ004083. Anyone with any sense who was in trouble would come to the Whips and, and tell them the truth and say, no, this, I'm in a jam, can you help? It might be debt, it might be um, scandal involving small boys, or any kind of scandal which um, a member seemed likely to be mixed up in. They'd come and ask if we could help, and if we could, we did. And we would do everything we can because we would store up brownie points. If I mean that sounds a pretty, pretty nasty reason, but it's one of the reasons. Is if we can get a chap out of trouble, then he'll, he'll do as we ask for ever more. Thank you. Now, and do you recognise? I didn't really hear that. But I'll, I'll tell you what he said. The, tell me the gist of it. Yes. No, I'll tell you what he said. But did, did you know Tim Fortescue? I must have done, but I didn't recognise him. He, yeah. he, he was MP um, for Liverpool Garston between 1966 and 1974. And you started, I think you told us, in 1965 in Parliament. Right. So I, must, he, I must have known him. Yeah. Yeah. But what he said, and, and, and this I can um, tell you verbatim, um, he said that anyone with any sense who was in trouble would come to the whips and tell them the truth and say, now I'm in a jam, can you help? It might be debt, it might be a scandal involving small boys, or any kind of scandal in which a member seemed likely to be mixed up in. They'd come and ask if we could help, and if we could, we did, and we would do everything we can because we would store up brownie points and if I mean that sounds a pretty, pretty nasty reason, 
but it's one of the reasons because if we could get a chap out of trouble then he will do as we ask forevermore. Now he was a Tory whip and that he was talking about his own time and obviously the interest as far as this inquiry is concerned is his reference to in effect covering up a scandal involving small boys because if there was a one of your flock was involved in that you cover it up and he'd be yours forevermore for whatever purpose you required him in Parliament. Do you recognise that from your own experience? I, d I don't recognise it, but in fairness, uh, Fortescue would have had a, a, a vast number of people to deal with. I only had a handful, yeah. and I never had any experience of that kind. Oh. And, and, you, and you're saying that because of the comparative sizes of the parties? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, just a couple of other matters, please, um, Lord Steele, and then, um, as far as I'm concerned, you, you will be finished. Um, first of all, behind the divide, the, the, in the file, behind divider, um, behind divider four, please, INQ003953, if that can go up on screen. Yep. Now, this is um, a diary, a 1988 diary for the 12th of April. Right. Um, and you see at 12.30, lunch, special branch, senior officers, special functions, room fifth floor, New Scotland Yard. Here's a test of memory. Do you have any idea why you were invited to a lunch of that nature? Would that I've be... Looked, I've looked at that and I cannot remember, but I can assume that it would be one of... Um, several briefings that other public bodies did have of MPs, and I was probably one among several MPs there. Would but I, a, I can't remember, honestly. Would, would that be a, um, a regular occurrence? As, Absolutely. As... A, a fre frequent occurrence was uh, uh, branches of the public service and, indeed, private industry as well, which mm. host events of that kind to, to brief MPs about what they were doing. More, more particularly, though, um, uh, as far as this inquiry is concerned, special branch, was that a regular occurrence or, or not? Or, or senior No, I please? don't think so. I, I think it would have been a one-off. Would it likely have been on any particular topic? Or, no, or... I think it would just have been about their, their general activities. All right. Thank you. Now, finally, um, can, can you go, uh, if you please, uh, behind Divider 14... And it's a document that was added today because it's come to us very recently. Have you had time to read this, um, Lloyd? Right at the back, it should be. Divider 14, we'll put it up on screen, INQ004197. Lord Dropling. Yes, I haven't read this yet. All right. Um, let, let me read the two paragraphs to you. And, and how this has come about, Lord Dropling is... Uh, is a witness. We're yes, going sir. to hear from him. Right. But he made a statement, as you see, um, yesterday, uh, the 12th of March, which he sent to the inquiry, uh, and he says in the second paragraph, over the weekend of the 9th to the 10th of March, I read the opening statement by counsel's the inquiry, which has jogged my memory in respect of two separate issues, and these are the issues I'd like to see if you have any recollection about. Firstly, approximately 50 years ago, and 50 years ago would be 1969 um, or thereabouts, during a private conversation with John Cobb, QC, later Sir John Cobb, he, took me, he told me in an informal capacity that he had been asked by police or the DPP to look at papers regarding child abuse allegations against Cyril Smith MP. He told me that after going through all the papers, he'd advised the police or the DPP that he didn't think there was evidence sufficiently strong to get a conviction. And Lord Jopling says, I didn't see any of the papers he was referring to. Now, pausing there, I can tell you, Lord Steele, that what happened between police and the DPP was gone through um, uh, during the very inquiry investigation I was telling you about. This didn't arise, uh, and the inquiry had no information about this at all at that point. OK. But paragraph four, um, it, <clears throat> he says this. A few years ago, I heard that Lord Steele of Aikwood 
was being criticised over a potential cover-up of evidence against Cyril Smith. I to told Lord Steele informally about my previous conversation with John Cobb. I believe that he subsequently referred publicly to my conversation with him without naming me. I can't recall now how I heard or read that he had referred publicly to our conversation. Now, does any of that ring any bells with you? It, do it doesn't. I do remember Michael Chopling uh, telling me this, yes. Um, but I, I don't remember, like him, I can't say that, um, I don't remember how I, or why I would refer to that in any public uh, occasion. Well, he, he, he's talking about, on the face of it, and we'll have to ask him when he comes, he, he's talking about you being criticised yeah. over a potential cover-up of the Cyril Smith case, and because of it, Lord Jopling... Um, tells you, although the link between the two is difficult to see at the moment, uh, yeah, that he, must, yes, he, he uh, tells you about some advice he understood counsel yeah. had given to the police or I the DPP think, all those years ago. I think this was after all the publicity which we've dealt with earlier in the Daily Mail from Danzig's book. Yeah, I see. I think that's what it was. But, yeah. but now you don't have any independent recollection no, of, of, no. of this conversation? I, I don't know what, how or why I referred to it publicly at all. I can't remember that. Well, Lord Steele, those are all the questions I, I have. Um, I'll see if the chair or the panel have any questions for you. We have no questions, thank you. Thank you very much, Lord Steele. Can I, there are just a couple of things. May I say to, to the yeah, inquiry? Yes, please. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a, a scheme called the uh, Disclosure and Barring Service. Yes. Um, it, it's, it has occurred to me, talking to colleagues recently, that it, it might be a good idea if political parties were to apply that system to candidates or, you know, when, the, when they're coming forward for selection. It's a point the inquiry might like to consider. The other thing which is uh, less likely to be in your hands is that I, I, I must say I am a bit concerned about the unqualified way in which you cannot libel the dead. The dead have got relatives and friends, and I think it's... Uh, uh, rather scandalous the way some of the things have been said about people who are not around to answer. Thank you for your well, comments. Thank you, Lord Steele. Well, your, your comments are on the record. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for indeed. coming. And thank a you. Very important inquiry, and I wish you well. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair, um, I don't think we've got anything to choose. Have we? Chair, that's all the evidence um, for today. Um, 10 o'clock tomorrow, if you please. Thank you.